We know that girls are trafficked because they're promised jobs. And we know that girls are trafficked when they're abducted. Uh, we also have heard a lot that girls are trafficked by family members. There's communities called Bedia communities where historically they have been putting their women into prostitution in order to provide for the rest of the family. The girls grow up knowing that they're destined to be a prostitute. When, when they're rescued, they are really confused because they say to us, what are you rescuing me from? This is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I'm meant for. And then the fourth thing is girls are trafficked because they're, um, they fall in love, promised marriage, and they go along with their uh, fiance. And then he sold her, he sold the girl when, uh, when she got to, to the big city, to Pune or Mumbai. Whenever we uh, go to the police and ask them to, to do a rescue, we play the role of leading them to the location primarily and identifying the girl and the brothel keeper. We never go without the police. So during, during a raid, um, there's, there's built-in protection because we're going along with a police force. The danger levels change when it comes to the investigation because the investigation is totally uh, done by Freedom Firm, independent of the law enforcement agency. And our investigators, young men who are going into the areas pretending to be customers, um, do have to be very careful. But their objective is to go in, leave if there's no young girls, if there is, engage the young girl, get as much information as they can from her. Uh, they're, always, they're always wearing undercover cameras, so everything is documented, everything is recorded and that's uh, actually first and foremost for their own protection and their own accountability, and to identify who the brothel keeper and brothel manager are. Once you've found a, a young girl, is to find who's the person that, that's exploiting her. Seventy percent of our girls are HIV positive, and so teaching girls, you know, what that disease looks like, how do you self-care in that situation, the, the girls we rescue are completely uneducated, typically. Most wouldn't have even been to kindergarten. And so just learning to read and write in any language, not just English, but their own language, um, beginnings of literacy, learning how to add, subtract, use a pair of scissors and cut a straight line, just a lot of practical ways of, of being with the girls and teaching them. And then I developed the um, Leg Up program. Horse therapy was just this really tangible way of bringing a horse and they get to ride and groom the horse and, and interact with the horse um, and also other disabled children and not focus on themselves so much. In learning how to trust an animal, learning how to love something else, we, we saw little steps in, in being able to counsel them, relate it to real life situations. And probably the biggest way that we see rehabilitation for these girls is through a job. What are your skills? What skills do you need to learn? And how can you be successful in the world outside of the brothel? How can you survive? And so we do that through the platform of Ruhama Designs, which is the business that Freedom Firm runs. And the girls make jewelry. They'll learn computers, um, they'll learn how to upload photos, they'll learn how to take photos. They can learn different parts to manage the business. They'll help me in designing uh, the products, packaging, all kinds of aspects of real business. And so our challenge is how do we bring these girls from a place of brokenness into reality of what a real employer would expect? And so that when they leave us, they're not just gonna fall back onto, well, the only thing I can do is go back to the brothel. And, and if you look at any organizations that are working with these girls across the world, um, that's the biggest challenge. There's lots of ways that you could combat trafficking, but probably uh, the most effective is to hold the perpetrators accountable. So when you can catch a brothel keeper who has been forcing a minor girl into prostitution, living off her earnings, um, abusing her and you can bring that brothel keeper before court and actually get a prison sentence and that brothel keeper spends time behind bars 
uh, you, you have stopped that brothel keeper from being able to exploit more children. But you've also done something far more significant than that even, is that you have sent a message to all the brothel keepers, and the message is, if you exploit minor girls, you're gonna spend time in prison. You're gonna spend time behind bars. So there's a, a multiplying impact of putting even one brothel keeper behind bars. Every time a girl gets to stand up and tell her story in front of a jury, she just takes huge steps forward in um, coming to grips with and feeling like there is some way that, she, that she's being heard, that, that what happened to her mattered, and it hasn't just been forgotten, and that those people have to account for their crimes.